Hey team, and welcome to another video in our Astrological Magical Elections video series. My name is Ryan Butler, and I like to drink cranberry juice out of a wine glass because it makes me feel fancy and because real wine makes me feel hungover. Today, uh, we're going to talk about our magical election opportunities that are going to be available to us between our Aquarius new moon on January 21st and our Leo full moon on February 5th. And of course, I'm joined by Lee today. I finally got a cat to come and work with me in uh in in recording after a couple of videos without having one um but during our new moon to our full moon we're of course dealing with the waxing moon phase and during this time we get to work with more uh, more celestial energies that are more inclined towards growth and development and gain and things like that which is more fun it's a, it's a more fun thing to work with um there's a little bit less finagling of various magical uh or uh, astrological astrologically symbolic stuff to make you know the waning period a bit more or more fruitful the waxing period kind of has that baked into it so a little bit more fun stuff going on in our waxing moon period and i hope that that comes across in the election opportunities that we have to talk about tonight well we're going to go ahead and get started tonight uh talking about our magical election opportunities for the north american continent before moving on um and in north america we have what looks like five electoral opportunities to pick up um our first one is going to be on january 25th at around 1612 um, so just a little bit after 4 p.m. And this is going to be an opportunity for a first lunar mansion talisman. The first lunar mansion is a mansion that is primarily focused on like the development, the creation of energy, about momentum, about overcoming inertia, those kinds of things. Um, so when we are working with the first lunar mansion talisman, it's important that we are able to kind of uh, channel that energy into something a little bit more productive, something that we've been trying to do, something we've been trying to accomplish. Um, the first lunar mansion is very helpful when it comes to overcoming feelings of like procrastination or dread or uh, you know just those feelings that we that we sometimes find ourselves feeling when we don't super want to do something but we need to get it done anyway. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend the first lunar mansion for like overcoming uh, like burnout or something like that. I don't think it's super great for that because when you're feeling burnt out, you're supposed to rest, and the first lunar mansion is not great to do that. So if that's something more in line with what you're facing, then this probably isn't helpful for you. But taking a look at our election, we have the moon placed here in the first lunar mansion. And at this time, she is applying the close conjunction, of course, with um, Jupiter here, also in Aries. The moon uh, is going to be very angular on the midheaven, which is what we want. And she's going to be protected from squares of Mars and Saturn. Nothing to worry about there. The moon is also going to rule the first house because Cancer is rising. So again, then we're looking at the moon as, you know, the ruler of the first house and we don't have any complications there. Um, we already said, so that's safe. And the ascendant degree is also safe, not worried about the connection between, um, you know, Saturn or Mars uh, in, in regards to uh, like an aspect from the ascendant or something like that. Um, I like how I like talking to the camera instead of like my microphone. That's very helpful. Um, Lee, do people want to see your face? Not hiding behind a microphone. So this is something because the uh, energy of the talisman itself in the election is focused so much in the 10th house. This could very much be about a... Uh, you know, talisman oriented towards getting work done, like career stuff done, um, anything like that. It doesn't have to be, uh, but since the conjunction is there, that sounds like a great place to start. If maybe you, you know, weren't sure where to apply this, but I'm sure you know exactly uh, where where you need a bit more oomph to get to get going and to get things accomplished. So look into that first litter mansion talisman if that's at all available to you uh, to fit into your schedule. Our second electional opportunity for North America is going to take place on January 30th at 2020, so 20 minutes after 8 o'clock at night, and this is going to be an opportunity for an Aldebaran fixed star talisman. Um, now, Aldebaran is a star that's in the constellation of Taurus. It's the great giant red eye of the bull, and when we're going to Aldebaran for magical purposes, um, we're primarily focused on honors and wealth are kind of the big two things. Um, that, that um, Aldebaran is pegged as. Uh, so increases riches, brings honors and things like promotions and awards, things like that. Uh, and so in general, Aldebaran is good for like an investment talisman or like a financial protection talisman. And it can also be very useful for like career achievements and things like that. Um, so all in all, Aldebaran can be a very good kind of base, like, like a foundation, I guess, for, um, uh, for increasing wealth rather whether through like savings and investment assistance or through like you know career and wage increase that way um either way aldebaran can be very helpful for that uh as a more minor uh, as a more minor thing aldebaran can be useful for like anger management 
but generally there are other talismans that I think are a little bit better for that. Um, so something to keep in mind there. But looking at our election, um, uh, da -da, Aldebaran is positioned at 10 degrees of Gemini, so you get 10 degrees Gemini either on the Ascendant or on the Midheaven. Here we have that on the Midheaven uh, with the Moon applying a conjunction with the Star and to Mars. Uh, and Aldebaran is a star that is said to be of the nature of Mars. So having Mars on Aldebaran um, with the moon applying to both Aldebaran and Mars is really good. We don't really get an option for that very often um, just because Mars isn't always in Gemini, even though it has felt that way recently since Mars went into Gemini and retrograded and has spent the last thousand years in it um, now kind of stationing and going direct on its way out. Um, at the same time, we don't have to worry about a, a bad application from Saturn interfering uh, or with the Ascendant, the ruler of the first house um, is Mercury down here at 15 degrees Capricorn. Um, everything's looking good with that. Again, we know no bad aspect with Saturn there to worry about. The downside to this talisman, I think, is if you look here in my dignity table, um, you can see that both the moon and Mars are very slow in this talisman. Um, and that's not great. Typically, you would want really both, uh, but especially the moon, to be fast um, uh, because that means that the talisman itself kind of gets the job done more quickly. Like the talisman moves forward and it gets stuff done and, and everything's right with the world. But um, the with them both slow, then it can drag out. And this can be fine with Aldebaran um, because it's more about like increasing wealth, right? So that usually takes time to build. So things like investment um, is probably the better opportunity to go for this one. Um, whereas I probably wouldn't count on it to like get me a job promotion next week if that's something that you're up for. Um, so just keep that in mind with the Aldebaran Talisman. It's gonna be more of a slow and steady kind of a thing than anything uh, that gets done quickly. Our third electional opportunity for North America is gonna take place on January 31st at 2049, so a little bit closer to 9 o'clock on this one, about 8.49 p.m. And this is going to be an opportunity for a 7th Lunar Mansion Talisman. The 7th Lunar Mansion is one that is very similar to the 3rd Lunar Mansion. Um, it's also for the acquisition of all good things. Um, so the 7th Lunar Mansion can be really great to go to for, uh, I guess, wish fulfillment. I'm not sure that's a really great term to use, but that's what I'm going to go for. Um, the kind of a generalized positive force to bring about positive good changes in one's life or uh, situation. You want some cranberry juice? No, he does not. In our election, uh, we have the moon in the seventh mansion and she's on the midheaven. And at this time she's applying this trine to Saturn in Aquarius. And so this might be kind of a weird thing, I guess, because normally um, when I'm constructing or flipping through, <laughs> constructing sounds like I'm like actively making them, but really I'm just flip, I'm just flipping through time. Um, whenever I'm fl flipping through trying to find um, talismans, uh, I I tend to you want the moon to apply to a planet that can do the business, that's fit to do the business, and that can happen in a couple of different ways. But the one that I primarily filter things through is um, can this planet get me what I want? Like can this planet um, is it is it within this planet's job ability and nature to get me what I'm looking for? from this talisman. So when I'm making a seventh order mansion talisman, I'm asking basically, um, can this planet that the moon is applying to do all good things? Can it get me good things? Um, because if it can't, then I don't need to make the talisman. That's silly. And so with Saturn and Aquarius, that's might be like a, hmm, <laughs> can it kind of a question. And so typically what I'm filtering this through is, you know, Saturn as a malefic planet probably is not super inclined to giving in a way that like an aspect with Jupiter or Venus would be much more inclined to do so. Um, so I'm offering this as an opportunity simply because Saturn is doing well in the sign of Aquarius for a little bit longer. Um, and I think this talisman could be good for like more specifically asking for like Saturnine things, like things related to Saturn, um, good things related to Saturn rather than um, just kind of like good things generally. So if that's something that you feel like you could work with, then great, cool. If not, I mean, you could still give it a go. I don't think anything bad necessarily is going to happen with it. Um, but like I said, Saturn is much less inclined to grant kind of generalized favorable things. So you're going to have to kind of make sure that it's kind of a Saturn specific thing. We still have the moon being very slow in this part of the Zodiac. Um, so that's going to be an issue to contend with. Um, but the ruler of the first house is this Mercury here. Um, who is also unafflicted by Saturn or Mars. 
and the Ascendant is far enough away from the square of Mars to have to worry about it at this time. Uh, if it's still a little bit too close for your liking, feel free to push the Virgo Ascendant um, up somewhere to where this there's some more space here. Right now it's 8 degrees, which I think is fine. But if you want to get it to 10 degrees, um, then you can absolutely do that, or even a little bit more. Lee, you monster. He knocked my ring light off. Look at this. I, I just want you guys to see what I go through to do to bring you this. I'm so... The subject of astrological magic is so persecuted. <laughs> you coming back, Lee? Yeah. Oh, absolutely he is. <laughs> He's so bad. Our fourth, I think, I lost count after Lee knocked over my lights, but I think our fourth election opportunity for the North American continent is going to take place on February 1st, this time at 9.45 p.m., and this is going to be an opportunity for the 8th Lunar Mansion. Now, the 8th Lunar Mansion is one that is primarily associated with, like, victory and strength and things like that. Um, and while the text kind of talks about the 8th Lunar Mansion almost... Uh, uh, almost exclusively in a way that would be interpreted as like war like like overcoming somebody in battle or for a war or fight um we can extrapolate that into other uses people fight for a number of different things and a number of different reasons um and so any sort of like conflict or competition the eighth lunar mansion can help us be victorious or you know kind of help us be a little bit more likely to overcome our opponent successfully so that could be fun um so whether that's a legal fight or a, like I said, a competition for something, applications for grants or scholarships, um, anything like that, the Eighth Lunar Mansion can help us get an upper hand in. Um, so looking at our election here, we've got the moon in the 10th house in the Eighth Lunar Mansion. Uh, at this time, she's applying the trine to Venus in Pisces, which is very nice. Um, Venus being also the ruler of the first house and neither Venus, oh, you know what? Oh, damn it, I did it again. <sighs> See, I did it again. Um, all right, let's see if I can make this work. I probably can. So this isn't going to work out um, because, as you guys know, the ruler of the first house is Venus, um, and Venus is down here in Pisces, and Venus in Pisces is square this Mars in Gemini, and that's not going to work. The ruler of the first house can't be afflicted by the aspect of a malefic planet. That's not going to work. Bad juju. Um, bad, bad, bad times. So what we'll do is we can probably... Um, move this time back. Whoa, uh, maybe not by hours, Ryan, but you know we can move back a little bit. Um, we can move this time back to a late Virgo rising, um, and this will get us. Hold on, let me. No, 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 that was fine. Yeah, the moon is applying. Yeah, the moon's up here now, or still the moon's behind. This will get us Mercury as the ruler of the first house in the fourth house. Uh, cool circle, bro. Um, that'll get us Mercury as ruler of the first house. Oh, okay. Uh, in the fourth house, which is better, Lee's left me, so I'll adjust my camera momentarily. Um, and Mercury is not afflicted by Mars or Saturn, and neither is the Ascendant degree. So this would actually be what I would recommend, something closer to like 930 to get a late Virgo Ascendant. Um, because with the Libra Ascendant, you're going to have Venus square Mars as your main significator uh, as the ruler of the first house, and we don't, we don't mess with that. So make sure to use the Virgo Ascendant. And I'm sorry, apparently I'm just going to keep throwing these weird things at you guys. Um... To, to 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 do and that's might mess up our next talisman too so this will be fun to see how this works out hi it's me again um so our fifth and our final electional opportunity for the uh, north american continent i've had to change it up a little bit from what i initially wrote down because i again overlooked the venus mars square but on no i'm sorry <laughs> on november uh on february 3rd uh at around 2041 so just around 845 um, we have an opportunity for a 10th Lunar Mansion Talisman. The 10th Lunar Mansion is one that is focused um, primarily on healing, um, the reinforcement of health, and for the assistance in diagnosis. So some really fun, very helpful uh, powers that the 10th Lunar Mansion has. Um, and in this election, we are going to focus on the moon here in the 11th house and in that 10th Lunar Mansion. And at this time, she's applying this trine to Jupiter in Aries after she of course switches signs into Leo um, there's no you know bad aspect from Saturn or Mars in involved here and the Virgo ascendant we're I guess we're just gonna lean really heavily into the Virgo ascendants um, is going to be uh, of course ruled by the Mercury here in Capricorn uh, again unafflicted by Saturn or Mars 
um, and the ascendant itself again is far enough away from Mars to not have to worry about the square. Uh, if you want to keep Mars uh, even further away from the square, feel free to push the time uh, back a bit to get a later degree of of Virgo rising. That's totally fine if that's what you want to do. Uh, but yeah, I, I initially I had this written down uh, with the moon on the midheaven, uh, so something more like this ish, like this ish, yeah. Um, and the main problem was just Venus, ruler of the first house, um, in a square aspect with this Mars, which you can't, like, especially in, like, a healing talisman, like, no, bad times, don't do that. Um, so, I, something I overlooked when I initially wrote it down, but, you know, everything, uh, comes out in the wash, and you just had to fix it, but luckily we were able to still kind of incorporate or utilize that Virgo Ascendant to be able to save this as a, as an election opportunity, and wasn't something that we had to kind of wholly throw out like we've had to in the past. So switching gears here, um, leaving behind the North American uh, election opportunities and moving into Western Europe, our first election opportunity is going to be kind of a weird one, and it's going to take place on January 23rd at around 9.30 in the morning. Um, this is what I'm essentially billing as like a Saturn planetary talisman. Um, it fits all of the kind of key features that we would normally look for in a Saturn planetary talisman. It, it makes, you know, it clicks all those boxes so it can function as that. <laughs> And normally I don't really make these videos um, to point out more complex elections that I would uh, encourage more advanced practitioners to work on. So what I mean by that is I tend to make these videos like very beginner focused. I tend to use like very specific kinds of charts um, to help people who are getting started but don't really understand the astrology behind it yet to, to, to be able to practice. Um, but... Uh, and, I, and I tend to ignore those more interesting, like complicated um, charts for these videos. And that's something that we more share in uh, or talk about during like office hours or other more private um, conversation groups. Because I don't necessarily want beginners to like think that it's, you know, just to go with, with whatever crazy thing uh, if they haven't really figured out the basics yet. So this is going to be one of those times <laughs> where I break that rule, I guess. Um, so while I would initially bill this as like a Saturn uh, planetary talisman for anybody who is still needing one, uh, even though hopefully you get it taken care of soon, um, it's such an interesting com like con conjunction of stuff that somebody who is more advanced can probably do a lot more with this. So be to, to the beginners, this is a Saturn planetary talisman. Um, to the more intermediate this is more than that. This is a Saturn talisman. This is a Saturn conjunct Venus conjunct Nebel Getty um, talisman. So we have um, Saturn Venus conjunction plus it's all kind of happening on top of the fixed star to Nebel GD, which is at 23 degrees Aquarius. So we're all kind of right here together. So that could be like a more fun, more complex kind of talismanic ritual to 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 create and work with. Um, but we're going to kind of approach this, like I said, as if it's a Saturn planetary talisman. Um, because Saturn is very angular in the first house on the ascendant in the sign of Aquarius, the moon's applying that conjunction, and it is Saturn's hour during this time. Um, so all of our normal stuff clicks here, and then there is the additional benefit of having, uh, you know, Venus present, which is a nice kind of benefic influence. Jupiter gets to be present also in the first house for another benefic influence. That's not super like pertinent or connected to the. Um, um, to the talisman itself, but it's nice to have. And then the fixed star Nebel GD is also here. So there's a lot of different kind of parts involved that could be an interesting, like I said, could be a really fun kind of experimental thing to try if that's something that you think you might be interested in. Give it a shot. If you're not interested in that, then just make it a Saturn planetary talisman. And that's good too. All right, our second electional opportunity for Western Europe, North and Africa is gonna take place on January 26th, this time at around 1040 in the morning. And this is gonna be that opportunity for a first lunar mansion talisman. So the first lunar mansion is one that is primarily about like energy generating, energy focusing, and energy funneling. Um, it's about getting energy to get things done, that increasing in momentum, overcoming inertia, overcoming things like procrastination, and you know, helping one feel more motivated to accomplish or to do. Um, and that's really what we're focused on here, just kind of getting energy to move in a way to where it doesn't languish and sit and just kind of like die off and stagnate. Um, helping things move forward, helping things be more productive when that's called for. Uh, the first lunar mansion is not especially good for overcoming feelings of burnout. Uh, that's not really what I would recommend using it for. 
um, for burnout, you typically want to rest and recover. And that's not really the first mansion's way of doing things. It doesn't know what that means. Um, but this is really more in dealing with like procrastination or anxiety and overcoming, kind of pushing through those. That's really more the focus of the first lunar mansion. Um, looking at our election here, we've got the moon in the first mansion conjoined the ascendant here. And at this time, she's applying the sextile to Mars. I really like Mars sextiles or Mars trines. Um, when it comes to the first lunar mansion, they're very similarly oriented. Mars is all about moving forward and, you know, being gung-ho and getting things done. So we have a, a good, like, similitude or overlap in, like, symbology and, like, inter like, planetary appropriateness, I guess you could say, which is typically what you want. Like I talked about before in the North American section how um, I, well, we'll talk about it in the next one. So put a pin in that. So anyway, Moon-Mars connection, love it for this one. And at the same time, I also wanted to put in another thing with the sun uh, in the sextile aspect of the ascendant by degree, which I think is very helpful. The sun is another planet that's very energy producing, energy creating, um, and a little bit more, um, what's my word here? A little bit more measured in how it spends it or allocates energy, which can be very helpful. So all in all, a really great election here. Um, Mars is the ruler of the first, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mars is the ruler of the first house down here in Gemini. Um, excuse me, unafflicted by Saturn, not, you know, averse. The only thing that kind of sucks about this, and I probably, and I, I should have said this about the other one too, but the only thing that really sucks about this first intervention talisman is just how slow a lot of the key players in it are. The moon's moving pretty slowly in this part of the zodiac. Or is she? I think she might be moving more of her mean, actually. Um, oh, this is having her down as fast, 1350. Yeah, okay. So the moon is still technically moving quickly. Okay, that's a little bit better. But I know that Mars is moving slowly because he's just overcome his uh, station. So the Mars is moving slowly, um, and then the Moon is moving more quickly. So we probably have a good even out of this. Um, I was thinking that the Moon was moving a bit more slowly in this than she was. But I think the slow Moon is something that will fight uh, momentarily. Um, so our third electional opportunity for Western Europe and North Africa is going is has some options here. Um, so it's going to take place on January 31st at 21.12. So 9.12, a little bit before 9.15 p.m., um, and this is going to be the opportunity for the seventh lunar mansion. The seventh lunar mansion is one that's about the acquisition of all good things and tends to be a little bit more focused on like financial success. So like increase in profit, um, protection of, of uh, investments and assets and savings and things like that. Um, but the acquisition of all good things is is, a, is still a, an important part of this, of this mansion's powers. Um, and in our election here, we've got the moon um, can join the midheaven and she's applying the trine to Saturn in Aquarius. And so, um, what I was mentioning before about, um, so typically I filter electional opportunities through, uh, like, is the planet the moon applying to helpful? Can it, uh, can it accomplish the thing that I need it to accomplish? Can it give me the thing that we want? Um, can it help us with the goal that we're trying to achieve? Uh, and normally I filter that through like planetary nature, sometimes planetary ability. Um, and so Saturn as a greater malefic isn't super inclined in like giving things, you know, that's not really what it wants to do. Um, so for the seventh lunar mansion, in this case, um, I would lean into Saturn because it's got a trine aspect, which is good. Um, and also because Saturn is an Aquarius, a sign that it does well in. So it's operating a bit more beneficially here. Um, so, you know, Saturn might not be a planet that can give you things generally, which is probably not, uh, not super awesome. Um, but it is a planet that can give it its own things. So this can be an opportunity to like specifically wish for Saturn type things, um, or like Saturn type investment strategies or things like that, <coughs> excuse me. Um, instead of just being like, Hey, I want things. And this is an election where we have a few different opportunities for it. Um, so if you're not able to do this one, um, then you could try. So if you're not able to do the one that occurs on at, at 912, another option you have is the next day, February 1st, this time at, um, 10, 12 in the morning. And I like this one too. This was a really fun one. Um, it's got, of course, that same, now the moon is in the third house or house of joy. She's still applying this really tight trine to, um, well, it's much more tight trine now to Saturn and Aquarius. So we still have that going on, but now we have Jupiter in the first house to help kind of stabilize the talisman and give it a little bit more oomph to it, which I think is really nice. Um, and then another time that you might consider for this is, um, 1345. Yeah. Which is going to look more like this. Uh, here the moon is still in that mansion, but now she's passed the trine to Saturn and is now applying the trine to Venus. This trine is a little bit far. It's about 10 degrees away, uh, nine-ish, 10 degrees away. And so that's, that's a little bit far. The moon's got a good like 12 degree reach on her. So it's not like out of the question for the moon here. Um, 
and it Venus is much more, especially in Pisces, much more capable of providing uh, like like good things in general. So this might be the election opportunity that you decide to go with if you wanted um, something a little bit more generally useful. Um, whereas Saturn is going to be much more specific to what Saturn can provide, Venus has 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 a much wider amount of things that she can do. So this might be the more preferred opportunity for many people. Um, so go with that, and that is February 1st at 1345. And then our final election opportunity for Western Europe and North Africa is going to take place on February 4th, this time around 430, 1637, and this is going to be that opportunity for the 10th Lunar Mansion. The 10th Lunar Mansion is one that's primarily focused on health and healing, um, particularly sort of like preventative health, shoring up the immune system kind of a thing, um, creating a barrier around the body for <clears throat> health protection. Um, but if you are already sick, then the 10th Lunar Mansion is very helpful for um, um, like diagnostics, uh, enhancing treatment. So there's still some healing modality, like there's still some direct healing modality there, even though I wouldn't necessarily say that's like the 10th Mansion's primarily, primary ability. That's not really what it does best, but it can if we need it. And in this election, <clears throat> excuse me, we've got the moon here on the Ascendant, and she's applying a really nice trine um, to Jupiter in... Uh, areas here. So just a really great uh, kind of setup here for this election, um, for this talisman. I really like it. The ruler of the first house in this instance is the sun here. Whoa, cut right through in there. Uh, is the sun. <clears throat> the sun is unafflicted by Mars. We're not quite close enough to the conjunction of Saturn to really have to worry about it. Um, the moon is also not afflicted by Mars or Saturn. So all in all, it's just a really good, a really fun 10th um, Lunar Mansion talisman to grab. The we're starting to get more of the 10th Lunar Mansion now than we were in the past. Um, it's been a minute since we've had some good options for the 10th Lunar Mansion because Saturn has been too far in it has been too early until you uh, into Aquarius. I'm sorry, um, to where it was casting that you know opposition to the degrees that um, the 10th Lunar Mansion uh, resides in. But now that it's so far into Aquarius, we don't really have to worry about it now, which is really nice. Um, so now we're going to start to see some more of those uh, 10th Lunar Mansion talismans pop up. Um, and let me see. And yeah, the moon's going to be waxing in the 10th Lunar Mansion for the next few months. So hopefully we'll see more opportunities for this mansion pop up. It's one of my favorites um, it, it, throughout the, you know, throughout the winter into spring. All right, that's all that we have going for uh, Western Europe and North Africa. Now we're going to transition and talk about Australia, our final location. Hello, Australia. Um, and they also have four electional opportunities, one that is a little bit slightly different from uh, the ones that were shown with Western Europe and North Africa. Our first electional opportunity for Australia is going to take place on January 26th at just after 10 a.m. at 10.06. And this is that opportunity for the first Lunar Mansion talisman. So the first Lunar Mansion, it's the first one. It's about, you know, new stuff, uh, about sort of like the creation, the management, and the proper distribution or economy of energy. Um, particularly in how one kind of works with or funnels and channels their own energy generally to accomplish particular things. So the 10th order mansion is useful for initiating projects. So the, the first order mansion is very helpful for overcoming procrastination and feelings of anxiety or concern or apprehension about like doing a thing. So very useful for things that we've been putting off. Um, it can be very useful for helping us to like commit to and overcome um, very, um, like, uh, resolutions almost like, like how we typically do like New Year's resolutions. So it can be useful. It can be a useful tool when it comes to goal setting and goal completion. So something to keep in mind there. Um, all in all, the first Lunar Mansion is very helpful. I don't recommend it in cases where burnout is more suspected. Um, so if you're just feeling more burnt out about something, um, then the first Lunar Mansion is probably not going to be very helpful. It'll probably help you get the thing done that you're trying to do. But burnout is more about needing to rest and recuperate energy than it is about spending it more efficiently, um, though that can be a part of it. Uh, there are different talismans that I would go to for 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 like burnout and stress management kinds of things. The first isn't really what I would go to. The first is what I would go to if you're having trouble getting out of bed in the morning. Um, if you're having trouble like just not being able to focus, um, surfing the net instead of like working on something, that's really more the first uh, can be more helpful. But burnout and those considerations go somewhere else. Um, anyway, looking at our election here, we have the moon uh, conjoined the ascendant in the first lunar mansion. And at this time, she's applying the conjunction to Jupiter. Jupiter is a good planet for this. Um, I like Jupiter probably the most 
um, when it comes to Jupiter and the Sun are probably tied in this one when it comes to the first inner mansion. Um, because Jupiter is about like stability. It's about like an even process of distributing energy um, or anything really. But in this case, since it's the first inner mansion, we're talking about energy. Just like kind of very even, like uh, it's a... What's a good way? Mars is like, go, 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 which can be helpful. But Jupiter is just like, a, we're going to go and it's going to be kind of a bit slower, but it's going to be continuous and we're going to do a good job. Um, so kind of that more even keel kind of easy, um, easy cruising kind of thing. Whereas Mars is, boom, hit the gas and let's go. Um, and the sun is a little bit more on the easy side of it too. But all in all, we're going to focus on that Mar on that Jupiter Moon conjunction. The ruler of the first house is going to be Mars here in the third in Gemini. Mars isn't afflicted by Saturn. Uh, Mars is moving a little bit slowly in this talisman, which isn't super awesome. Thankfully, the Moon is moving more quickly, um, so that will help kind of offset some of that kind of stagnation that Mars might be experiencing, and that might be like very symbolic of your own kind of feeling, you know, symbol uh, of like stagnating or just kind of like trying to get yourself going again. Since Mars did just recently station direct can be some nice symbolism there for you to work with. Uh, one thing that you could do with this talisman or with this election that's a little different here than what I did is, um, well, I say that, let me look. If you move the ascendant a bit more forward to like five degrees, yeah, that could be fine. Um, then you can also incorporate the sextile of the sun to the ascendant, which I think can be another extra fun little boost. So I would recommend trying to do that, and that takes place at around 1025, um, but the originally kind of advertised time of 1006 can be fine too. Um, it's just if you can swing it, if you can wait a little bit, uh, if you can wait like another 20 minutes, I think the sun connection with the ascendant can be another fun reinforcing kind of a thing. Here's Blossom! Yeah! Yeah! A little more. Come here. Bless him. Yeah. yeah. Here's Blossom, my cool, my cute black void. Let's see how she, what she does. Um, so our second electoral opportunity for Australia is going to take place on February 1st at around 1612. So a little bit after, like around 415. Bless him. Um, and this is going to be the opportunity for that seventh lunar mansion talisman. The seventh lunar mansion is one that is associated with the acquisition of all good things in a way that is not that is not unlike the third lunar mansion. Um, but the second, I'm, no, the seventh, I'm sorry, lunar mansion is a little bit more focused on um, like wealth, a little bit more focused on financial gain, whereas the third lunar mansion is a little bit more kind of like uh, generally focused in a lot of ways. In our electional chart here. Uh, we've got the moon in the seventh lunar mansion uh, conjoined the ascendant, and at this time she's applying the trine to Saturn. Um, Saturn, as a little bit more of a malefic planet, is not necessarily one that you would think of as being more helpful for acquiring good things, and that's probably a good sense to have. So in this instance, we're going to make sure that we are wanting to talk with um, or ask the seventh lunar mansion for things that are more associated with um, Saturn good things. Uh, one thing that I actually want to check out really quickly is I want to see if I can get um, a different aspect here. And I think that we can. Oh, boo. No, we can't. Oh, what a nightmare. Okay. Well, I was hoping that by moving the moon to the midheaven, we could get the moon to move far enough into the zodiac to be past the trine with Saturn. Uh, but that does not look like that's going to happen. Um, let me see what could happen if I, no, crap, okay, well, poo. I was really hoping that I could get the moon far enough to, into Gemini to get past Saturn to be able to apply to Venus so that you could take advantage of that, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen um, while also keeping the moon in a good house before she crosses over into the 8th lunar mansion, so unfortunately, um, you could use this time, the 2114 time, if you're unable to make that first time at 1612, that's totally fine. Awesome, come here, come see people. Let people see your face. Um, that's totally fine. But the um, you're gonna have the Saturn trine either way, and so your your options are gonna be a little bit more limited uh, insofar as what you are able to kind of um, realistically ask for for Saturn, um, because Saturn's only gonna be able to really provide um, Saturn type things. Blossom, are you trying to knock over my books here? Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, but this is <laughs> okay spicy but well, this is still something that you can get some use out of the other thing to be aware of 
is that the moon is moving slowly in this part of the zodiac so it's going to take a little bit more time which is probably also something that is very appropriate due to the saturn influence in this chart as well so our third electional opportunity for australia is going to take place on february 2nd at around 2113 this is going to be that opportunity for the eighth lunar mansion the eighth lunar mansion is one that's primarily associated with victory and overcoming like opposition so historically the texts talk about it almost exclusively through like military conquest which you know fine if that's what you're into you know use that for that for uh uh for for defeating the enemy on the field of battle totally if you're a medieval general knock yourself out or if you're just somebody who likes like real-time strategy games maybe the eighth lunar mansion can be very helpful uh, in securing victory in those kinds of environments i haven't tried that out but i might write that down actually um but people have people battle and compete with one another in a number of different ways and that's really where the eighth lunar mansion comes through so whether that is like some sort of legal fight or uh some sort of competition or some uh, like promotion or anything like that the eighth lunar mansion can be very helpful in helping us to overcome another individual or another team um so ways to ways to work with that um for our eighth lunar mansion election We've got the moon in the 10th house in the 8th mansion, and at this time she's applying this really nice trine to Venus and Pisces. Um, so it, it would uh, just a really great kind of connection to have here. Um, the ruler of the first house is this Mercury down here in the 5th, and he is uh, not impacted negatively by the malefic planets at all. Um, the I had to change this time <laughs> again, uh, because just like with the Western European and Northern African versions, no, 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 the North American versions uh, of some of the charts, I had Libra rising, and we can't have Libra rising because Venus would rule the first house, and Venus is square Mars. So make sure you maintain this late Virgo ascendant um, if you're planning on making the 8th lunar mansion talisman. And then our fourth uh, and our final uh, election for the Australian continent and for the video is going to be on, uh, I'm sorry, on February 4th at 1826. And this is going to be the opportunity for the 10th Lunar Mansion Talisman. The 10th Lunar Mansion is one that is primarily focused on healing, on um, preventative health, for increasing the body's um, the vitality and strength to be able to fight off uh, illness and to ward off disease. Uh, so it is more focused on the preventative medicine than it is on like the healing side of medicine, which we see more focus on in some of the other Lunar Mansion talismans. Um, but our, but for those of us who are sick and are looking for assistance from the 10th Lunar Mansion, it is also very useful when it comes to um, um, diagnoses and the effectiveness of tr uh, and, and of finding the right treatment for the right issue. So that can be another very helpful avenue to explore with the 10th Lunar Mansion as well. Um, but looking at our election, we've got the moon placed in the 10th Lunar Mansion um, and in the first house conjoined the Ascendant. At this time, she is applying this nice trine to Jupiter, uh, which will, she will apply to a little bit more fully when she switches over into Leo in just a couple of minutes. Um, and the moon is the ruler of the first house in this chart as well. And we know that the moon is not afflicted by Mars or Saturn in this chart. Uh, the Ascendant's not afflicted by Mars or Saturn. So all in all, just a really good election to have for the for, for the Tenth Lunar Mansion. Um, and we haven't been able to have one for a little bit just because of Saturn. Um, Saturn kind of playing around in the first half of Leo really messed with the moon because then he can be opposite to her while she's in this mansion. Um, so we're starting to see this a little bit more now, um, which is very good. Uh, there is an alternative time for this as well if you're not able to do the 1822 then you may be able to do the 2322 ish time um, and here we have the moon uh, on the midheaven now applying the trine to jupiter a little bit more strongly jupiter here in the sixth house i actually like as uh jupiter uh benefics and houses tend to protect individuals from uh, assuming that planet is doing well um, benefics in good and benefics in bad houses tend to protect people from the more difficult effects of those houses and give them kind of like the gifts to maneuver them a bit more easily and so having that in this kind of talisman i think is very helpful because that's really kind of the goal of the 10th lunar mansion um so don't be put off by the by jupiter in this house here and then finally uh mars becomes the ruler of the first house here in uh in gemini and I think this is nice just because Mars kind of gets a nice trine aspect from Venus. Or I'm sorry, that's a square. Ha! It's, so that's not as nice as I wanted it to be. I don't know anything. Um, but Mars is unafflicted by Saturn, not worrying about like the sun dealing uh, any kind of negative uh, aspect with Mars there either. Um, so you can either do the previous time at 1822 to get the Cancer Ascendant, or you could do um, the 2322-ish time to get the Scorpio Ascendant. 
Um, either one works well. If you don't know which one to do and you're able to do both, then I would look and see. Then you can just consult kind of your natal chart. Um, what house does Cancer rule? What house was does Mars rule in your chart? Which one is better focused for health stuff? So like 1st, 11th, 10th. Um, uh, 1st, 11th, 10th, 5th kind of things that I would look for there. Uh, and then go with whichever one best fits uh, your chart based on that, or having the ruler of the first house in either of those signs would be an indication too. Um, but either one, neither one will steal you, will steer you wrong. But alrighty, everybody, thank you guys so much for being here and spending time with me and my cats in these videos. Um, hopefully there is an electional opportunity that you can work with, that can help you with whatever kind of situation you're facing, that you're able to fit into your schedule to make. Um, I'm, I'm glad that we're starting to see some of these um, more obviously helpful elections come into play again after a while of having having some that weren't that, like they weren't super good. We still have some that are kind of out of commission, like the third lunar mansion is going to be out for a little bit uh, now, which is really unfortunate. But being able to get the tenth lunar mansion kind of back on board now that Saturn's moved out is nice to have. And so that's just kind of like the nature of the game. We kind of have to keep cycling through. Um, mansions that are going to be kind of online and offline just because of how different planets or different points are are situated in them and that's just kind of the nature of the beast um, but we're starting to see some good ones come on after a while and we're starting to see some good ones kind of turn off um, so it's just it's just how it goes but we'll be we got a new set of players on the field um, to use a sports ball analogy and hopefully we'll be able to use them um, for some good effects that we uh, haven't been able to use for a little bit. But thank you all so much for watching. A uh, special shout out. Thank you guys uh, to all my patrons for all your support. Really appreciate you all. Um, everybody take care. I will see you guys on the Leo full moon and have a happy Lunar New Year, the year of the rabbit.